Hi there. On this tutorial, we're going to look at the immunization form and kind of talk about immunizations as a whole, how to obtain them, and what is needed for um, enrollment into the program. So first and foremost, a lot of the students who go into a medical career have to have immunizations or the proof of their immunizations before they can go out to clinical externship. So a really Easy way to start this process off because a lot of students get kind of overwhelmed of how to find these and what does everything mean. So before I go into our form and dive into each different part, the easiest way is to start with childhood immunizations. If your pediatrician is still open wherever you lived, call and see if they have documentation. Um, if they are not, you can always call the health department in the city or the county that you grew up in and they have to keep records for so many years. If you don't find it from there, of course, talk to, you know, parents or if you have anything, because there used to be little cards that they used to give out where you would have your immunizations from the health department or from your um, pediatrician's office. So kind of three ways to start to see, because a lot of these immunizations are going to be some of those childhood ones, and we want to be able to save time and money because immunizations will cost you money. OK, a lot of insurance companies do not cover some of these immunizations because they are childhood ones. So just kind of giving you that heads up as well. So once you've exhausted all those efforts and you can't find anything or let's say you found a few, then what you will need to do at that point is review this list that I'm about to review with you. And you're going to have to do one or two things. One, if you know that you had, you know, your Hep B series, you know that you got all three of them, you just can't find documentation. If you are positive you've had these immunizations, then you will go and get something called a titer, T-I-T-E-R, which is down here, it says titer, okay? What a titer is, is they draw your blood and they're checking you for antibodies to say, yes, you have antibodies for Hep B. Yes, you have the antibodies for MMR. So if you get um, the titer drawn, it has to come back as a positive titer. Positive means, you are positive for the antibodies. So this is to protect you out in clinic. If you are negative for the antibodies, if something was to happen, you had an open scratch or wound, um, other, you know, you're working with the patients and somehow, you know, the microorganism gets into your bloodstream, then it could cause you to have that infection or disease process. So this is, a lot of this is protecting you as well. Um, during the program, we'll talk about how to protect yourself, but this is just what's needed by the clinical sites. So a titer is a blood draw to see if you are immune to something or you have the antibodies for it. If it's a negative titer, it means you do not have the antibodies and you will need that booster shot or whole series. Okay. If you're like, I never got the Hep B series, I know I never got it, then you will just have to go get it. You don't do the titer because the titer will be negative and that's just extra money that it's going to cost you. Okay, so to go through this um, really quick, um, Tdap. So this is gonna be pertussis and um, diphtheria. So you can have the TD or just the Tdap. Those are the two most common combinations for this immunization. This has to be done every 10 years. There is no titer for it. You show me proof or you have to re-get it, get it done again and show proof. So this form has to be filled out by your physician's office. So let's say you know you got Tdap two years ago, you have proof of it, you will take all of your documentations, you will take our form, you will make an appointment with your physician's office, it can be a nurse practitioner or what have you, and you will take all of your proof to the physician's office appointment and they will fill out all of this saying, yes, you have this on this date and verifying everything is accurate. Um, flu. So the flu shot is required per CDC flu season. Flu season is going to be from the fall time, so about October 1st to around May of every year. So during the summers when they make the brand new flu shot. So if you got a flu shot in April of 2022, once October of 2022 comes, you have to get a new one. OK, so most all of you will have to get this um, just because it is an annual one. MMR, this is mumps, measles, and rubella. So this is a place for um, to show that you've had two. So the requirements here are two MMR vaccinations or a positive titer, once again. Um, 
a lot of, if you're a little bit older, a lot of um, childhood immunizations only required one MMR. So it might be a little different. If you can only find proof of one, take that to your doctor's office. They will get you another one to show the proof of two. Okay, so I need proof of two um, or you need um, the titer, the positive titer. Hep B series, it's a three-step series. So you have to have one, two, three. It is a time-sensitive series. So as long as you've had the first one completed before or by the time you turn in this form, um, then we are good to go. Because I believe the first one you have done and then it's 30 or 60 days for the second one and then it's six months for the third one. So it's fine as long as you have the first one completed, right? And you can have a titer for that one um, if you wanna go that route. Varicella, this is going to be um, the disease process that gives chicken pox. So you cannot say, hey, I know I had chicken pox as a child, I'm good to go. A lot of clinical sites, especially hospitals these days, um, all the ones I've worked with within the past like 10 years, they do not allow you to just say you've had chicken pox. You have to show proof of two varicella immunizations or a positive titer. If you know you've had chicken pox and you've had one varicella, then just do the titer. You're probably going to show that you have immunity, but you have to show me proof of either or the two vaccinations or the positive titer. Okay. The next one here is probably going to be new to all of you guys. It's not a childhood immunization. Unless you work in the medical field, you've probably never had it done um, or if you were in the military. So there's two ways to get this PPD done, or I say two ways to do the TB test, okay? So the TB test is tuberculosis. This is just making sure you do not have an active case of tuberculosis. So the first way is to do a blood test called Quantiferin Gold. It is a draw that they take some of your blood and they test it to see if you have active tuberculosis. Probably the quickest way to get it done because the other one is kind of a two-step process and it can take you a month to complete. Um, but I believe it is a little bit more expensive. So I would call around, you know, your places like Quest or any um, blood place that actually, you know, draws blood. And I'm trying to think of some of the other names. I know Quest Diagnostics is very common down here. LabQuest um, will do it, things like that. So you always call around to different places, walk-in clinics, emer um, some of these emergency care centers like Urgent Care. Um, they will sometimes have some of these immunizations and titers. If you don't go that route, the other route, which is cheaper, because a lot of this you can get done at your health department as well within your county, um, it's called a PPD for tuberculosis, but it's a two-step process, meaning what they do is they kind of prick your forearm, then you wait two to three days, you go back and you have it read. If you have some kind of reaction, it's read as positive. If you don't have a reaction, it's read as negative. Then you'll wait one to two weeks, depending on the protocol for wherever you went, and you'll do the whole process over. And the reason for this is there is a lot for CDC, there is a lot of false negatives and false positive readings. So they always do two of them to make sure. If you ever have a positive reading on a PPD test, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you have tuberculosis. There are some childhood vaccinations and um, some other things, especially if you were born outside of this country, that could present or make you have a positive reading, but you really don't have TB. So what they'll do is send you for a chest x-ray. If you are sent for a chest x-ray, and only if you are sent for one, do not just get a chest x-ray, it must read negative for tuberculosis. But at that point, just contact me, I'll walk you through it. The last item here is a physical. We need to make sure that you can do all the technical standards that are provided in the institutional catalog. Um, things like standing on your feet for eight hours as a at a time, helping to move heavy coils, patients, um, see here, all that kind of thing. So we do not have a separate form. Once again, you'll just take this and then the doctor will sign below stating that his signature indicates that you are clear to perform all duties as an MRI technologist. And then at the bottom here, your physician or physician's office will sign um, and fill out this um, whole part. So that's kind of running through the items that are needed. Just be sure to review these. Um, definitely start by trying to look for your childhood immunizations first. And then if you get hung up or, on anything, as I know, this can be kind of a lot coming at you at one time, please reach out to me um, and I can help walk you through any area you might be getting stuck on. Um, this is due um, as an enrollment document. 
So please be sure that you start on this early because um, some of this can add up not only time and money if you don't get started on it when you need to. But this is needed for clinic, so just keep that in mind. Um, other items that are not on here are going to be items that the clinical site specifically might need for you to go to clinic. So we do not require the COVID vaccination for enrollment into our institute. However, if we place you at a clinical site and they require it, then you will have to get it done. Other items that we don't require, but the site might, is a drug screen, um, COVID vaccination, proof of individual health insurance. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones, COVID vaccination and booster. Those are the main ones. So please keep in mind that just because it's not on this form doesn't mean you might, you still might have to get it done at some point if the clinical site wants you to get that done. Um, other is going to be BLS by American Heart Association, which is your basic life support, um, otherwise known as CPR sometimes. Um, and I think that's about it for now. So if you have any questions, let me know. Please review this in full. And I am here to help you if you have any, any concerns. Thanks.